Welcome. This video will be exploring the steps of a soccer kick in terms related to kinesiology. You can break down this action into four major steps. Planting the non-kicking leg, swinging the kicking leg back, propelling the leg towards the ball, making contact with the ball, and then landing on the foot you kicked with. In the first step of planting, there is an isometric contraction between the muscles that act on the hip joint. This is to provide a strong foundation for the muscles on the opposite leg to perform actions. The second step is swinging the kicking leg back. This motion involves extending the hip and flexing the knee. With hip extension, the gluteus maximus and the hamstrings are primarily responsible. They are working synergistically while contracting to produce this movement. All at the same time, the rectus femoris, iliosolas, TFL, and the other glute muscles are antagonizing. This makes sense because the muscles and these group of muscles are mainly hip flexors, which is opposite. The hip flexors in this motion are eccentrically contracting in hip extension. Simultaneously, as the hip is extending, the knee is also going into flexion. This is triggered by the hamstrings as well as the popliteal. The TFL and the quadriceps are again antagonizing this motion. The gastrocnemius of the calf region is supporting knee flexion as a synergist. The next step is propelling the leg forward. This can be broken down into hip flexion and knee extension. As mentioned earlier, as the antagonizers to hip extension, now the primary muscles responsible for hip flexion are the iliopsoas, rectus femoris, TFL, gluteus minimus, and medius. The antagonizers to hip flexion in the kick will be the hip extension. Whoa, it's flipping on us. I think we're getting closer to seeing how the muscles of the lower extremities work together. When they are working together, whether acting as agonist, antagonist, or synergist, they are equally important in performing and maintaining these actions. Now, as the leg moves closer to the ball in hip flexion, the knee is also moving closer towards being flexed. The muscles Primarily responsible for this are quadriceps and TFL. I remember when I played soccer, this area, the area close to my IT band gave me lots of problems. I can now see the role TFL plays in all the actions I used to practice every day. The next step is making contact with the ball. As the leg finally makes contact with the ball, the ankle joint is in plantar flexion. It is necessary that the ball makes contact when the ankle is pointing downward where the laces fall. If the ankle is even slightly dorsiflexed, the ball makes contact with the toes and it can go in literally any direction. This error on the part of the player can hurt as well as be mocked and called what you may have heard before as a toe ball. After the ball has come into contact with the foot, the leg is propelled in the direction at which the ball is intended to go. You will then land on the foot you kicked with and the ankle will now be dorsiflexed to brace the impact of the ground. In the kick we described, you would probably be taking a penalty kick. This is a close range shot towards the goal. You will land on the foot you kicked with and the ankle joint is now dorsiflexed. There are many muscle groups at play during this fluid motion of the ankle joint. The extrinsic ankle muscles strengthen and support the arch in flexion of the ankle and also make sure that the ankle joint is not rolled in tendon stretched or torn. The triceps serrae group works as one to pull the calcaneus bone into plantar flexion you could break this kick down into even smaller steps, but for the sake of learning the upper extremity, I will stop here. Thanks for watching my video exploration, and I hope that this may assist you as well in your anatomical journey. My sources are listed in the description. Thank you.